Hey everyone, welcome to the second part of this Web API versioning video. This is the eighth episode of this playlist where I cover all the major topics that you need to know in order to become a top Web API engineer. So in the last video, I talked about the additive change strategy. Link to that one is in the description down below. In this video, let's talk about the explicit versioning strategy. We'll start off by talking about what it is then we'll talk about the three different ways in which you can set it up. We'll also talk about how you can go about labeling these versions and some strategies you can use to gracefully deprecate versions. So if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned. Also, if you like this type of content, please consider liking this video as it helps push this content out to others who might find it useful as well. All right, so what is explicit versioning strategy? Well, basically with this approach, you maintain multiple versions of your API. Whenever you want to introduce a change in your API, you release it as a separate version. This strategy requires you to create a numbered versioning system that allows users to interact with particular versions. This is usually called the versioning scheme. Each time you make a change, you release a new version with an appropriate version number. More on how to choose these numbers later. So, Unlike the additive change strategy that does not allow you to make breaking changes, this approach allows you to make any kind of change. And that's the main difference. API providers like Stripe and Slack use this strategy as their products are constantly evolving and an approach like the additive change strategy is simply not feasible for them. Okay, so at this point, we know that each version has a version number. To support this version access pattern, we have a few different ways in which we can get the consumers to communicate which version of the API they want to use. So we have URI components, we have headers, we have request parameters. Okay, so let's talk about the URI option first. In this method, the version scheme is inserted as a base for the URI. As you can see in this example, the version scheme is inserted right before the channel's resource. Now, in some cases, you could also define the version scheme after the resource, but this should only be used when you want to apply the version scheme to a particular resource or API method only. When you want to apply the version scheme to a whole suite of API methods, go with the option of using it before the resource is specified. Now, one of the benefits of using this method is that you improve the ability to debug and inspect requests and their associated versions quite easily, as they are readily indicated in the request URI itself. Now, on the flip side, you should avoid using this approach if you don't support these endpoints as permalinks. Also, if you end up using this approach, be prepared to support 300 level HTTP status codes to indicate redirection for moved or moving resources. Another way to specify versions is by using HTTP headers. You can do this by setting up custom headers or using the accept content type header. For example, instead of specifying the version scheme in the URI, we can either accept a custom header like YouTube version 1.2, or we can use the accept header like accept application JSON version 1.2. Now, one of the benefits of using this approach is that it reduces the noise in your URIs, allowing you to keep them clean. However, this approach makes it less visible and can have implications regarding client caching if the client interprets two requests sent to two different versions as the same request. The final method is to allow users to indicate the version they want to use through request parameters. So using the same example, you can specify the version by adding it to your request parameters like this. Now this has similar benefits to URI components, but it can be challenging to manage them in your application. This is because request parameters will be resolved after the request has been routed to a certain endpoint. And that means that a particular endpoint can be request heavy and logic heavy, depending on the number of versions you maintain in that endpoint. Okay, so now that we've talked about a few ways to set up your versioning scheme, let's talk about a system for you to label your versions. 
is one commonly used system called the Semantic Versioning Specification, or SEMVR in short. In SEMVR, there are three types of versions. There's a major, minor, and a patch version. So let's say there's a version 2.0.0 for an API. Major versions are for breaking changes or backward incompatible changes. So if we have any of these changes, we increment a major version. This makes the API version 3.0.0. Minor versions are for adding new features and functionality in a backward compatible way. This type of change would result in the version jumping from 3.0.0 to 3.1.0. Patch versions are for backward compatible defect fixes. A patch version change would bump the version from 3.1.0 to 3.1.1. Oftentimes, API providers will not indicate the minor and patch versions in their version schemes. This is because these changes are backward compatible, so the clients get automatically bumped up. But this is a decision you and your team need to make, depending on the type of consumers you have. Okay, so at this point, you know the different methods you can use to set up explicit versioning. You know how to label your versions. Now, as you keep making changes and releasing versions, you will have to maintain all the versions in your code base. But this is not desirable in the long term, so you have to think about how you can deprecate versions. In some of the organizations I've worked at, we've gone with the approach of maintaining only two versions behind the current version. So if we are currently at version 3, when we are releasing version 4 of an API, leading up to that release, we would work on deprecating version 1. Now this really depends on the product you're working on. Some API providers can't deprecate their versions as easily as this, but it's in your best interest to maintain as fewer versions as possible. So make sure to discuss this and have a plan in place as early as possible. Once you've decided on that, you would need to communicate this to your consumers. One obvious way is direct communication through emails, newsletters, or your documentation platform. You could also use something called a sunset header. Now, this is a header that is added to the response object. It signals that a resource is expected to become unavailable at a specific point in time. Clients are expected to treat these sunset timestamps as hints. Once a sunset time has arrived, request to that resource should result in either 400 level errors or 300 level redirections. The sunset header doesn't need to include which type of error is expected once the resource is decommissioned. So I hope this helps you understand how to plan and prepare for explicit versioning. If you and your team are building a new API, make sure to discuss which versioning scheme makes more sense to your use case. Make sure that you have consistent labels so that your clients know which versions to use. I would highly recommend that you stick to SEMVR because this is an industry standard. And finally, have a plan in place for when you decommission certain resources. Well, that's it for this video, guys. If you found this useful, I'd really appreciate a like. And if you'd like to follow more content like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel.